Hi, today is the 16th of June, 2022. I appreciate you tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel, like my official YouTube videos, go to my website, www.susanmealing.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. So I just finished listening to the third day of hearings in reference to the January 6th event that occurred on 2021. And for those who have listened to my official YouTube videos before, well, you know that I tend to use metaphors. If I once knew you in person, face to face in person, you know that I use metaphors regarding various points in time. It's a bit stormy out right now, whether it just is as it is. So I'm gonna start off with the fact that January is obviously the first month of the calendar year. And so the situations in regards to what happened on the 6th of January, 2021, I'm gonna go through a few different timelines to take in consideration. So in the year of 2014, I had a bunch of situations going on after my son and I had wound up in Washington State after the Stony LaRue concert at Cowboys Dance Hall. We had been in Arizona and because of a few other needless problems regarding a bunch of factors, those situations that led to Arizona and all sorts of other needless problems at that point in time because of the occurrences. So I had spoken with two people, or maybe three, that I had known in the state of Texas before how my son and I wound up in Washington State. Now remember, my son was a minor biologically, and my daughter was a minor, obviously, because she's one year, two weeks, and two days younger than my son. And so biologically, they were minors. And at the time of 2014, well, that would be four years, no, five years, since I had landed at the bottom of the ocean in the Atlantic area and surfaced alive in regards to my work. Now, if civilian recreational scuba divers weren't recreational, and they were just civilian scuba divers instead, well, then in those capacities in taking scuba diving seriously, instead of the lazy recreational factors that they utilize those words to describe to me as to their style of scuba diving, well, that would be proven. It doesn't matter how many people they may or may not have certified at all in scuba diving, because what is considered as not recreational and not lazy would be to make the correct choice at the correct point in time instead of hesitating. Very simple. So I had told these people as to how I wound up in Washington State, similarly to how I told people regarding the justice of the peace, regarding my children's biological father. And a bunch of people thought that it was funny. As a joke, and I told them, there's no joke, it's just serious. There's truth behind every joke. I may have the capacity to put things in a bit of a satirical way. However, it doesn't change the fact that it's the facts. And so in these references, these civilian recreational scuba divers were informed as to how the justice of the peace occurred. They were informed what I dealt with. They were informed that I gave birth to my son 
less than two years, it was only a year and a half, from the time frame of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, that I still had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain when I gave birth to my son. Same thing in regards to my daughter. I still had that subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain, and it had only been two and a half years from the time frame of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 when I was in basic training. And I know that this was a country that was formulated on Judeo-Christian values, but hey, there's different types of situations. And just because of the religious aspects in the Constitution of the United States of America, there is the fact of the amendment that there is no specific religion that will be put into that aspect of that is before the time frame of. So yes, the irony of the year 2000 and then in the state of Texas, those TRF SCA types. As to those reenactment types and those situations, instead of, you know, being serious about life, they want to do that sort of stuff and compare that to taking life seriously as they should, hypothetically. So in regards of January, I had informed these people I was going to be writing. And these people knew that I had written already. So those who would know Cross and Kitty, they were informed in January of 2014 I was going to be writing officially. Now I could have actually begun writing in the official capacity as I already had begun back in the year 2007. I had already started my autobiography back then. So I had officially sent off the first draft out in the year 2011 which is an irony because I think it was the second or third time that an Irving situation occurred that year. And so, you know, did the best I could. And with everything that was going on, you know, I had situations occur every time I made attempts to discuss things with other people. And then there were other factors, like whether or not you believe it, where if I spoke with people who just, whatever the capacity of, uh, I suppose suggestions are the only thing I could make at that point in time, because, well, Irving 2011. And so when I made attempts to get other people to do certain things in 2009, regarding an individual who caught a puffer fish, well, some stuff started stirring up. And, you know, international scuba, they, they decided to view things differently in comparison. I told my biological mother and I told my biological father that there were situations in Carrollton, Texas at the time in reference to McCoy Elementary School as to the principal, Don Rank, and they decided to just what have you. I told my biological little sister, and after her abomination of a wedding, as far as that's concerned, in my opinion, her response was, well, what do you think people in Carrollton have to deal with looking at the fact you have a key of van? Don't you think you could get a better label for a brand in comparison? As the neighbors next door had been there with that old lady and that old male and then the son that had lived with them at that time. And so I had informed all of those people, I didn't care about name labels the same way they did because only certain names mattered. And that particular name didn't matter the way they thought it did. However, it is ironic that the Kia van was closer to their side. And so that's just a personal opinion. 
And so then the complaints from my biological little sister as to those factors, and she already had been in that abomination of a marriage by that point in time as well, and those particular factors, then again, that's my opinion. And again, as a Republican in the Dallas closer area, I had acknowledged that I had voted for Senator John McCain and Governor Sarah Palin in that year of 2008 and 2009. And I went to one, one, just one, one grassroots movement. One, not many, not like 2020, just one. And whatever political situation which I did not want to get involved in politics, there is the irony regarding the January 6th hearings where Vice President Mike Pence had been asked a question about certain decisions and I just personally did not want to get involved with politics. I had explained that in regards to the Army and those factors before the year 2000, in the year 2000, or in the year of 1999. And my biological mother and my biological father, they thought I was just joking, that I did not want to get involved in politics when I told them that I was serious. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, there was truth and it wasn't a joke. It was just serious. I didn't want to deal with it because I understood that there was more involved that I didn't want to deal with. And so if I ever had to deal with it, people were going to deal with the reckoning. And my biological mother laughed. She thought I was joking in 1999. And I looked her square in her eyes and I said, no, you need to understand. If I have to get involved in politics, there will be a reckoning. I promise, I don't want to get involved in politics. If I have to, I promise you, there will be a reckoning and you will deal with things. I am not playing games. I'm not interested in games, okay? So in January of the year 2000, my biological mother decided to tell a few people some stuff at the McHenry County Government Center in Woodstock, Illinois. And I told them I wasn't interested. She tried, she was like, here, go in and apply to work here. And I said, I didn't want to. I knew what I needed to do. And mind you, this was after the Y2K, obviously, because it would be January in the year 2000. And so I did the little typing test. Mm -hmm. And the computer had told the people at McHenry County Government Center I was too good to work there. They said that my level of expertise as far as the computer response to McHenry County Governor's Center, my level of expertise was far above what they had available as employment there. And so there wasn't anywhere for them to put me in McHenry County Government Center. My biological mother was upset and there was a recommendation for me to go to the military. So I've told people about these problems regarding my biological mother thinking she knows better. She doesn't. I've told people about how my biological father dealt with certain things because my biological mother and my biological little sister stirring up so many needless problems. And he didn't want to believe me at the time. And my biological little sister, she just was over dramatic and cried a bunch because she felt that I abandoned her, even though it wasn't my job to raise her. It was her parents' biological job to raise her. So she felt that I abandoned her because I went to the army to go save the world. 
Mm -hmm. You want to talk about selfish? That would be my biological little sister. She literally whined and complained and tried to get me to feel sympathy for her because she felt that I was abandoning her to go to the army to go save the world. She knew about my nightmare from when I was in second grade, knew about old Teddy Presbyterian Church. Anybody who's dealt with a younger sibling, you pretty much know how that is. And so she felt so abandoned because, oh my, I was going to go save the world. And what would she have to do while I was going and saving the world? Oh, and that reference. I know there are those who have that understanding of those types, as well as those who have met my biological little sister. So there's that January in the year 2020. Different than January 6, 2021, though. Just wait, there's more. <laughs> so then you have, in reference of January of 2001, you know, when I was pregnant with my son, uh huh. I hadn't been awake from my coma for a full year. It hadn't even been a full year from the time frame of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 during basic training. And so I had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain at that time, and I was pregnant with my son. And, and, and I wasn't even, you know, justice of the peace situation <laughs> for a whole month by that point in time of that situation, though I had voted. And I voted a straight Republican ticket. I did. Yeah, or I shouldn't say straight Republican ticket. I, all Republican. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I like, I, I acknowledge in some ways, having known the term now more recently to MK Ultra, I liked the word Republic. Yeah. The word republic seemed really important. Mm -hmm. I didn't know fully, but I knew that when it came to the overall aspects, it seemed important. Not that I had a problem with Democrats or more so democracy. I just knew how important the republic is. I remember that from stuff that I had read from my childhood, how important the republic is. And so in the time frame, though, in the year of 2000, when I was in medical hold unit, I had sent an email to Z100 from my original email account, and I didn't know what to do. So there was a lot of stuff, and I, and I knew that the radio station was a radio station, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if they'd remember me. I mean, I know that they had a lot of phone calls and I did send an email in 1998 or 1999 to them after I had been moved from New Jersey to Illinois. And I was upset because the radio station was the only thing that was calming at that time because of everything I was dealing with in those years. And so I told them about this friends episode that I had called in to explain because one of the females in the Z Morning Zoo had wanted to know what happened on that episode. And so I dealt with stuff just to be capable to make that phone call so that way, well, because of my, my biological mother and biological father as to those times. So I dealt with it just so that I could do something to assist someone. And I knew it wasn't as big of a deal, but it seemed important and in some capacity of, and so I called in and the guy on the um, phone call for the, the gift situation had said, well, you know, you're too young to actually have the gift we normally send out. And so, um, you're in high school and can't really do certain things because of that. Um, okay. So I had a t-shirt that was sent to me in a 3XL as far as a tied type of looking t-shirt, which I laughed at because I had gone to the ocean so many times by that point. 
so I thought it was funny because the name Tide and then there's tides or waves and tides and so some point in time I had contacted while I was in medical hold unit and let them know you know I um I didn't know what to do and I had a head injury and so I do the best I could because I knew it was important to let them know where I was. Even though I was just one person, you know, in comparison to however many millions of listeners they have, just, just one. And so looking back in, I think it was 2019 or 2020, there were a few things that occurred through technology at the time. Um, I had sent a text or a page, there's a pager. I'd send a page to my company commander, 831, and I had to explain that. And I don't know what time of the year that was that I did that, because <laughs> I had just woken up from a coma and was dealing with headache and migraine pain, as well as the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain, which I hadn't learned the words for subarachnoid hemorrhage at that point, or frontal lobe, or temporal something or another, and <laughs> had issues understanding what memory issues and uh, cognitive disorders were. And I really, really had this, my anybody in medical hold unit, as well as any of my doctors at Brook Army Medical Center at the time, they all knew that I did, was doing what I could because I had this sensation. I told them about my nightmare from when I was in second grade and I was nervous that if I wasn't in the correct location that I couldn't do anything. And I thought that the only way I could do something was if I had graduated basic training and then went to AIT so that way I could help save the world. And I know how that sounds at that point but it is as it is and so january 2001 you know the court aspect as to the justice of the peace and having been in regards to that while being pregnant with my son for less than 30 days regarding the justice of the peace though that would have been registered obviously through technology and so January 2002, I was pregnant with my daughter and still had that subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. And then January 2003, well, had my house. I was doing the best I could. And there were certain situations, I suppose the irony regarding the 6th of January 2021, well, at later in the year 2003, my biological little sister and my biological mother and my biological father decided to move to the state of Texas. And I suppose it wasn't a white house, although there might be some similarities to the colorations. And then the irony regarding the shed that was the shed in the backyard of my house in San Antonio. It actually was white. And that Datsun truck problem after dealing with a few things. So it's not the same, though yet there is a bit of a metaphor that can be taken in consideration to Fred Loya insurance and that white Datsun, as far as that male is concerned. I believe that was 2004 if I remember correctly, after those three little teenagers that I didn't invite to my house, as far as the backyard situation. Uh, so then January of 2005, well, I was, it was during the first separation at that point in time. So I had been in my apartment. I don't know if that was the month that I had made the 911 phone call regarding a female and that situation in the front parking lot as to the USAA Boulevard apartment complex, I did get my sword out and a few knives as to if I could have 
figure that out better. I made attempts. Um, then uh, January of 2006, well, that was my first tattoo. My first tattoo in the year of 2006 was in January. It's my ankle tattoo. It's a black and gray scale heart with a black and gray scale rose with droplets of blood. It's my first tattoo, January of 2006. The situations as to the garage at my house in San Antonio had already occurred. And, you know, I was volunteering and all that sort of stuff, or it might have been still during the time of the psychic fair aspects in comparison before volunteering at Nine Lives Books, as far as that was concerned. And a lot of people in various communities knew of me by that point in time. Though my hair had been as it had been up until the middle of the year 2005. And then my hair got to this style. And January of 2006, my first tattoo. January of 2007, um, well, that was during the time frame of the official final separation regarding my children's biological father, my dead ex-husband, my ex-in-law's dead relative, and um, the arguments as to what he had tried to convince me of, he finally conceded that he couldn't convince me regarding the IRR situation. So later, around the year of 2009, I had looked through paperwork and found out he signed his contract in 2007 in comparison to anybody who knows how IRR goes. And so January of 2007, though, I was taking care of my son and my daughter, dealing with the situations as to that garage aspect regarding my house in San Antonio and those situations, doing the best I could to take care of my house. Still had that subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. Did all the stuff that I could as a, by technicality, single mom. And not once did I ever, at that time frame, get any monthly child support check. I paid for stuff regarding during the first separation to make sure my son and my daughter were taken care of. But that was at that time as that was. And so then in January of 2008, well, I know at that time was still the confessional aspects as to my now dead ex-husband, how a lot of problems that he was complaining about, such as how it, he didn't understand why I wouldn't defend him from Halloween regarding that situation, regarding his rack. And he, Grandpa Nichols had brought up the JCPenney pictures from the time frame of how that was going to be a problem in a large way because those dress blues, as far as the rack, well, and all types of stolen valor, I have not graduated basic training from the army. There are many reasons why you just acknowledge the truth. And for other people, such as my biological mother and my biological father and my biological little sister, well, they were embarrassed that I didn't graduate basic training. I have not been embarrassed by that. I'm not embarrassed as far as what my son had informed me regarding how basic training went. I understand that basic training is supposed to be difficult and certain things occur. I'm still proud of the fact that my son made an attempt and I'm glad that I made the attempt that I did. Because if I hadn't, 
Well, there are certain situations, such as my blue ID card, uh, and for the Armed Forces of the United States of America, which I didn't even know that that was a thing <laughs> at all. I had to have that explained to me. I had no idea what it actually meant. I didn't even know that was a capacity of the military. I thought you were either active duty, National Guard that could be activated, reservists that could be activated, or you were a veteran. And in veteran status, you could assist where you could, but it had to be within certain measures because certain types of individuals with certain backgrounds, well, they just couldn't have any employment. And if they weren't willing to do certain things to make attempts for actual employment within the civilian sector, well, I knew that that was problematic. I had discussed that with people before. I was invited to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. And so those particular situations as to those types that needed to be handled in a different capacity because if they weren't, well, they weren't going to be useful if they didn't do certain things. And they could be useful in other areas, but if they made a choice, they should know better. Well, they know how things go. And so I made attempts to explain that to people, especially in the state of Texas. Some people thought I was joking. And again, there's truth behind every joke. And so I made attempts. So January of 2008 was during that confessional time frame. January of 2009, I was getting my paperwork taken care of so that way I could begin my 26 scuba diving certification courses because what the civilian recreational sector of scuba diving did not know, though especially anybody such as at Camp Mabry in 2007 did not know. I was invited to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. I had the clearance level for that invitation back then in 1996 because I made sure to be honest. I made sure to be genuine because I saw what was going on. So I knew what needed to be done. So that way I could live and advance. And so didn't get to attend Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, though still my clearance in reference to, you know, when I was 17 years old regarding the army. And so only certain types of people would know that as far as that's concerned. And if they didn't know that by you know, official paperwork, if they were allowed to get to that, well, they'd have a symbol that they'd recognize. And that symbol was when I was 17 years old. And so those who know how that goes, as long as you maintain and sustain in the correct capacities, even if other people have biases, well, here's the thing about technology. Technology doesn't have biases at all whatsoever. And so as long as you are honest about everything as much as possible, well, Technology doesn't have a bias unless it's where it's the number of times you are genuine and truthful, as far as that's concerned. And so January in 2009, that was that. January in 2010, though, well, I'd already landed at the bottom of the ocean and surfaced alive. And I was making attempts where I could even though afterwards, 
this individual who caught a puffer fish, I still was making attempts. So anytime I discussed who had caught a, or I called it a poofy fish, because it got a poofy, um, I made the attempts I could with where I could. Now, there is the situation as to the Vandenberg. There's that radio call that went from the two different boats on that day in August of 2009, as far as I was concerned. Then there was when I got back to shore after my scuba diving and all of the people that I spoke with throughout Florida. And instead of any actual assistance to me at that time, I dealt with my ex-in-laws regarding my ex-sisters-in-law, my ex-brother-in-law, and they're, you know, wanting me to go to Alabama for some reason. For some reason, they thought that that was important for my son and my daughter and my ex-sister-in-law's middle child that was with me at the time. They thought that that was important that I stopped by Steele, Alabama, instead of just taking my son, my daughter, and my ex-sisters-in-law middle child back to the state of Texas. It's almost as though they had some sort of something in that hypothetical. Such ye of little faith. I had work to do. But in another time frame, <laughs> other than, you know, September through October, and then April, so September through October in a little bit of November in 2001, and then April, May of 2002, I had assisted where I could, as best as I could, giving suggestions. And so, you know, um, in comparison to that, it's almost as though some people had an idea in comparison. You know, if you're actually about life, you actually are about life. And so my ex-in-laws, they should be doing everything possible in the correct capacities to assist my son and my daughter. And you know, me being mom, well, you know, you respect and honor, but it has to be in the correct way. And so, do the best that I can. And so there's those situations, but you know, there's, there's those factors that the Coast Guard probably was like, we need to speak with her. And then the Navy was like, no, we need to speak with her. So there's some people that I went to high school with that may have thought of themselves more important than they were and contacted my biological mother, biological father, biological little sister in the 6th of January hearings today on the 16th of June, 2022, they brought up the month of December. And so maybe in December of 2009, my biological mother and or my biological father and or my biological little sister were contacted by someone who watched me throw a cafeteria table. They also had a guy who moved in with them shortly thereafter to my getting involved with scuba diving and landing at the bottom of the ocean. Irony, I suppose. And so there were a few other factors, hypothetically. And so, you know, um, maybe the Marines were involved in, and then of course the Army being like, well, she was in the Army, and then the Navy being like, yeah, but she was invited to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. And then, you know, some people in the Navy thinking that they had a right to something that they didn't at all whatsoever, because maybe they thought that whatever they thought, even though they knew in January of 2001 as to me being pregnant with my son while having survived a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. And well, you know, uh, that individual, I had to deal with things 
because of that individual thinking it was a funny game to tell someone in regards of, well, anybody who has a spouse. He thought it would be funny to tell who's my now dead ex-husband that he and I were boyfriend and girlfriend and we weren't. And so I dealt with stuff because he was being a ignorant teenage brat. And so I called him after I dealt with some stuff and then he had the nerve to have a temper tantrum after what I dealt with. You know, it's one of those, you don't have any rights whatsoever at all to ever be upset with me after what I dealt with because you decided to play a stupid little game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 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 no. There's a Jim Croce song, uh, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown. Yeah, even it pissed off the wife of a jealous man. And so it doesn't matter if you have two peas cooked in a pool cue <laughs> at all. And so it is as it is. So, and even though the situations went the way it did, here's the irony. If that same sort of garbage occurred as to who I actually was dating, at the time frame of, and that stupid childish crap, well, he would have seen throughout all these years that that male and I weren't ever dating, ever. I'm not his girlfriend. Unless he's doing that childish brat thing of, well, she's a girl and she's my friend which doesn't assist certain types of people. Truth is important. And so that individual, <laughs> then there's that, and could have actually had a celebration in regards of my work, but you know, so then there's 2010 in January, and who I was engaged to, uh, which wasn't the male that I had been with in regards to and made attempts referencing the puffer fish to get him assistance where I could. Well, there's those factors. And I don't know his family or his friends. But I made attempts. And I knew some of his friends. A few, not many. But I know of. And so then there's how in January of 2010, oh, the polar bear scuba dive. And I had already told people about my idea regarding scuba diving law enforcement. I suppose those civilian recreational scuba divers weren't intelligent because I had already shown a very small portion as to what my creation is as to the underwater wedding. And so you'd think that they'd have intelligence, but I guess not. You know, earning 26 scuba diving certifications, my childhood and my teenage years, my creation of the underwater travel system. But I decided not to become a scuba dive instructor because why would I need to be a scuba dive instructor to be a creatrix? Don't need that. Not for my style of work. Not with what I have the knowledge of. Not with what I have the understanding of. Not with what I have the comprehension of. I don't need to be a scuba dive instructor in the civilian recreational area. No, not with the work that I knew. Obviously. <laughs> so, you know, my childhood, I grew up going out to the Atlantic or the ocean, out from New Jersey and New York. And those waters in the northeast of the Atlantic, they are vicious. They, that's, that's why the coasties, because they have to know all sorts of water up and down whichever area of the coast. 
They need to be capable to swim in any type of water. And in comparison to the Marine Corps and the Navy, well, the most vicious waters are in New Jersey. And that, I mean, you know, along that area where it doesn't matter what time of the year, it's always cold. It doesn't matter if it's the middle of the summer, it's still cold. It's cold water, it really is. I made a joke about that regarding, oh, it's as clean as cold water gets it. I was born in the year of the dog, though, <laughs> so <laughs> for those who know what reference. You have to go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com. Same as www.ladydorybell.com. My book section. I believe that one would be a Finding the Silver Lining compared to Finding a Silver Lining, which you can click on the links to go to Amazon and purchase those books through my website, www.susanmeeling.com. There's also my journal blog, The Ornery PSA. And you can see what artwork I've worked on. So in reference to the January 6th hearings, it's in reference though, supposedly, of the Capitol situation in Washington, DC. However, me taking a non-scuba diver to my polar bear scuba dive. And that individual would definitely know just from that one experience, as to what he would have the capability to think about as to what I actually dealt with each and every class regarding scuba diving, each and every one. The Adventures of Susan Meeling Scuba Diver Extraordinaire, that three volume book series in my book section on my website, www.susanmeeling.com. Same as www.ladydorybell.com. What he saw I dealt with in 2010 of January, and then possibly those who would know in 2019, per class, per certification. Unattached female. So you know, those, there's a certain radicalized viewpoint. And so, you know, as an unattached female, you know, I just dealt with that regarding those factors. And I did the best I could for my son, my daughter, and I, among others. I kept my composure as best as I could, despite what I dealt with each and every class, despite what some people may have thought as to recreational civilian scuba diving. So even though some might not have known, well, don't pretend you hadn't been told or heard a story or two. And or in regards of 2019, when I got back to the state of Texas, you know, I can make a joke, it's born in the year of the dog, and then there's the situation, not in January of 2001, though later in the year of January, time frame after that, in the year 2001, I was big and pregnant with my son. There is this canine unit dog with an MP, or SP, I guess. I was like, oh, it's a little puppy dog. It's a little puppy puppy. It was just a Rottweiler. It was just a canine unit dog. And so, I mean, I grew up, my biological father trained Dobermans and Rottweilers. So, you know, a <laughs> German Shepherd. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> oh, I know, it's a canine. Okay, yeah, a canine unit. I know, I know. He's a little puppy puppy. That's all. <laughs> so, you know, in 2019, I just had this need to get back to the state of Texas because I had the sensation my daughter needed assistance and my son needed clarifications. And even though my son didn't really want me to go to the state of Texas, it seemed important, not just for my son and my daughter, myself as well, though others. And so maybe there's a irony, ironies regarding certain types of people because, you know, 
There is the house I went to, and that would be uh, the individuals I spoke with in regards to January of 2013, when I informed I was going to actually go for Now, they didn't know I was already working on my books. They didn't know that. They probably didn't know that I had been working on books since the year of 2007, officially, officially, regarding my autobiography. But I had a whole bunch of books that I was looking at authoring that I had talked about with people in the year 2004 and 2005, most specifically, and then randomly throughout other times. And so there's that 6th of January hearing where in this metaphor of that individual of some guy in that reference to Trump and stuff, you know, um, well, there is that factor I brought up about certain aspects to uh, certain types. And so in that reference, so then uh, if in that reference, so there was a phone call that or recording as to Trump before he was elected about uh, a situation. And just for the clarification, no, there had never been anything. So if in that hypothetical that someone had said something that didn't occur, well, I've already clarified that through my journal blog, The Ornery PSA on my website, www.susanelake.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. So if in any wishful aspects of, no, not at all. The only time that anything occurred would be at one event. And just because there was modeling, not the same. Though in reference to scuba diving in the civilian recreational sector, then there's where I had to defend myself by flicking a guy across the room. And he just so happened to have been named Joe, as I was told, and he had been in the army. That was at Rick's house. Just flicked him across the room, got my stuff, and I was engaged at that time. And yes, my then fiance knew I was a model, just as my then fiance also knew that I was in the lifestyle what's supposed to be considered the consenting adult lifestyle, by the way. I did not consent to that. Obviously why I flicked him across the room, because I didn't consent. So I flicked him across the room, and then I got my stuff and left. There was the Corona beer situation, which Skabuda would know any issues, because he drank that Corona, and so he would know what was an issue for my headaches and migraines that night, so to that fizzing from the bottom of that bottle. And then Rick, he went to sleep before Skabuda left. So, you know, I, I believe there's a legal definition to that. Then, so there's that, but that wasn't in January of 2010. That was after my then fiance had went to basic training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And so I had to heal his hand Ironically, I suppose, and so took care of that. But then in reference to having landed at the bottom of the ocean and surfaced alive and some civilian recreational types thinking whatever they thought, I don't know. But I entered scuba diving as an unattached female. And there's not one scuba diving certification I earned when I was in a relationship with another individual that was in scuba diving. And that even includes because of what occurred that includes my final scuba diving certification regarding cavern. Now, if there weren't any needless problems, well, then I would have had one scuba diving certification that I had been in a relationship in. But since I didn't have that, I wasn't in a relationship earning one of my 26 scuba diving certifications. Not in any of the classes, not in any of the dives that were required, just so that's known and remembered. So, you know, again, though, I didn't scuba dive recreationally. I had work to do, and I told people about my nightmare 
and when I was in second grade. I told people why I was getting involved in scuba diving and what work I had to do. And you know, there's different terminologies for some people who don't have headaches, but military guys that do, you know, certain types of employment aren't as enjoyable for certain guys. And so it's kind of like a headache to work in other aspects. Same thing with like law enforcement guys. It's kind of a eh, comparison to the thrill of certain things. And so, you know, I, cre I was working on creating underwater travel system for my head injury. You know, maybe that's why I was invited to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. I actually briefly discussed that with my interviewer before my interview. For those who understand that, I had said I was working on an, a project to protect the lands, the people on, because I, I had been dealing with a few things. This would be about the time of the there's this fishy fishy with teepee teepees that has a little dinky light. Apparently that's called an angler fish. And so, <laughs> that was back in 1996, by the way. Just as a reminder. And so in that particular irony of ironies of the if aspects as to the army in that capacity and or the navy, <laughs> army, navy, football. Well, there is this guy, ironically, so 45, his vice president of the United States of America named Mike Pence. This guy I knew named Mike <laughs> in San Antonio of any location, irony, irony, I just, it's a little pocket thing. <laughs> he, at one point in time, had warned me, you know, he did, or he didn't warn me about, he had let me know he didn't trust that particular individual at all. And I had defended, and I was like, well, you know, there are certain things and there are ways that possibly, you know, <laughs> always looking towards the best, you know. There are some good, you know, even in certain situations, they're still, you know, they're still good. <laughs> I mean, I don't really like Disney, and yet, mainly because of it's a small world. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> and now that I have headaches and migraines, it just, eh. <laughs> yeah, going to an amusement park with a bunch of screaming children with headaches and migraines, don't even have to have anyone with just in that capacity. Yeah, no, 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 no. I went to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas once after waking up from my coma after my head injury. <laughs> I went on the Batman ride because I was like, okay. Fine, I'll try. Well, that's a bad idea. However, the irony of irony, so you know, the, the little doohickey mabob as far as the <laughs> whatever it's called when you sit in the the roller coaster thing of mabob in comparison to Space Mountain. And so I was just, well, you know, and so I just kind of, <laughs> now this is, hmm, hmm. <laughs> compared to the American Scream Machine in, you know, New Jersey at Great Adventure. Uh, yeah. How can I get to go this fast while driving? <laughs> that seems... It was... It was <laughs> it's the equivalent of when I went on Space Mountain in a different capacity. Oh, I don't have to... In, in a different... So, you know, just as this is a, is a metaphor for the reference. Hmm. This is great. I don't have to listen to Anna and Patricia. This is fantastic. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh, look at the sights. This is awesome. Oh, look at all the lights. Fantastic. <sighs> and no music. Awesome. <laughs> don't have to hear that stupid song. It's a small world. Awesome. This is the best ride ever. <laughs> This is great. So the equivalent to that Batman ride, <laughs> you know, before my hairstyle just kind of had the little doohickey mabob that came around the little seat belt and just, mm. <sighs> you know, this, this part where my head keeps when that, 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 that part I'm not a fan of, but <laughs> which is an irony regarding a performance in the year of 2011. <laughs> that was pretty much my response. 
at that Batman ride where I was like, hmm, I don't appreciate that part, but hmm, the rest of this is okay. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, the little loop-de-loops and stuff. Hmm. Uh, you know, this is an irony for a reference in a different capacity. <laughs> I don't know whether to refer that in regards of landing at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico and some stuff I was handling or landing at the bottom of the oceanic waters in the Atlantic area of the ocean and handling some stuff. <laughs> or Irving, <laughs> the year of 2011, it is what it is. <laughs> it kind of is, is, you know, metaphors. Sometimes they, you know, proverbially can work in other factors. And so, you know, oh, well, that was simple. Oh, okay. <laughs> So in reference to January 6th hearings as to the capital situation, well, the hearing aspect of the possibility that civilian recreational scuba divers, and <laughs> instead of just asking me, you know, because that would make sense, that would be, that would be common sense. So, you know, then <laughs> if Crystal Lake South regarding you know, one particular and or his little brother, which irony, ironies, you know, Navy in that capacity. So most likely it would have been like, hey, you went to school with in that age, and he said, go ahead, go speak with Patricia. You know, you know, four of abominations. You know, my biological father said he didn't send my biological little sister to be a whore, the best little whore in the state of Texas. I don't know. <laughs> she may have lived up to that, but that is what it is. Uh, but hey, she's the best at something, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Although I also don't know what he was referring to, other than, you know, certain factors. So, eh. <laughs> yes, it's in the ass, so there's that. <clears throat> and so, you know, then. If, 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 my biological father probably, if he remembered the situation, if, 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 he would have probably been like, well, you know, you, yeah, I remember Susan threw a table to, to fend you for whatever, and he was not informed, regarding Mike, was not informed what Kenny had done in that particular reference. I'm sure if Mike had been informed that Kenny had called the apartment at the time spoke with my now dead ex-husband less than 30 days from the time frame of the justice of the peace and they eh, oh that yeah i'm sure my biological father probably would have had a different response <laughs> in that hypothetical if he didn't automatically mm -hmm, my daughter threw a cafeteria table and should have used it as a baseball bat in a different capacity, hypothetically, although that might be a more current thought process. <laughs> because, you know, I mean, I just threw it, and it was one of those long cafeteria tables, you know, the ones that fold up like an A-frame and stuff like that. That one, I just threw it, it bounced off of the top of the lockers, you know, a few yards away, and then, you know, just went in and <laughs> You know, people said they knew how people are from New Jersey. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they really knew. So maybe that's an example if that's what they're referring to. I don't know. <laughs> is as it is. So, you know, it's just, a, it's just a cafeteria table, that's all. Although in irony in regards of not January 2008, though February 2008, I didn't throw that cafeteria table. I was respectful to the Holy Roman Catholic Church even though I was originally baptized Methodist, then baptized Presbyterian, and then a confirmed member of the Old Tenet Presbyterian Church through Presbyterian Church USA. <laughs> I did go to St. John Vianney High School. So, you know, there's still that in regards to the overall, because it's not technically one religion. Technically, that's a starting point of three. <laughs> and so, and then there's all the additional studies, and, you know, there was the rabbis that went to Old Tenet Presbyterian Church and taught, so that's technically four. Uh, the Native American studies, and well, there's a few, because you can't say that it's just one Native American tribe, not just because there's five different Native American tribes in my bloodline, though also in reference to, you know, I know they kind of conglomerated together regarding Native American practices. They didn't all, they didn't all do the exact same thing. Each of them had their own names, as far as that's concerned, for reasons, and in turn, they had different names for 
the divine aspect for those references. Anyway, that's a whole other, it's a whole other kit and caboodle. <laughs> so going to that reference of the committee hearing it's to the 6th of January, 2021 on the third time irony and ironies as to the <laughs> year of 2010. So you have the civilian recreational scuba divers, that's a possibility of one group of whatever, partially because of how dare I bring in my then fiance, who, you know, um, <laughs> I've been a non scuba diver and uh, I had informed him as best as I could. Ironically, throughout the times of me earning my scuba diving certification, yeah, yeah. I don't remember when I started talking with him about my scuba diving certifications, but he got to meet Zippy, my little VW Beetle Bumblebee car. Yeah, a little yellow beetle with the black roof and convertible with the black leather interior. Yeah, my little, my little Zippy is what I called her. Got her little glitter eyelashes and little flower petals covers for her booty. <laughs> or rear tail lights. <laughs> The irony, that is the most modernized hippie in a different capacity, and I'm not into hippie stuff, which is an irony of ironies. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, there's that, and so he had, he had known about certain things, and you know, that was after the tea party. One event, although irony, one tea party event, one, one, one tea party event, rally situation, and he went to the scuba diving area with me one time. And so that one time, so well, that was about the 2nd of January, 2010. So the 6th of January, I don't know if any scuba divers in the civilian recreational, if they did a little text message thing or a little, you know, email chain sort of thing or phone calls, does it really matter if they utilize technology for this? reference regarding my sermon monologue lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, they should think about that though. So, you know, make sure you subscribe to my official YouTube channel. And uh, thank you. If you already have, make sure if you <laughs> go and encourage others to by, you know, subscribing to my official YouTube channel because my videos are only for me as far as, I mean, you could share the link to my official YouTube videos, but my recordings, the, the, you know, it's a private location, so, you know, it's only mine <laughs> in that official capacity. And so, you know, I, I, I don't um, do this for other people to make money. That's dumb. I do stuff for myself to make money, you know, because I've been doing that for a while to make attempts to actually make my own finances so that way I could do my own stuff in comparison to what other people have possibly mistakenly thought in comparison. So then there's January of 2011 and then there's, an, oh, the two other meetings, hypothetically, my ex-in-laws and or my biological mother, biological father, biological little sister with, you know, that marital whatever of abominations. So, you know, as far as, you know, January in 2010. And then the possibility of the army and all that sort of stuff. And I had already survived several months from August of 2009. And I had already made attempts. And so whether the civilian recreational scuba divers like remembered or not, I guess maybe because I didn't do an email, they didn't remember. Or maybe because I didn't text message, they didn't remember. Or maybe because I did, I don't know, maybe because I didn't utilize technology and it was an in-person, face-to-face in-person, maybe that's why they didn't remember. That would be their fault though. I would guesstimate though, there would be one person who would officially remember during that time frame of August 2009. That would be the individual I had been dating at the time. And so he might remember that I had told him in person, face to face in person regarding, you know, the Vandenberg area. <laughs> and before I could tell him about what I had, well, it went the way it did instead. Though, I, if he were to remember that particular aspect, well, then he'd uh, have an idea of some memories, not to the same level of 
as to my attempts to discuss him having caught a poofy fish. I can come here, but went the way it did. I still made attempts because I'm just that type of a person. I do care. Sometimes a little too much, but I do care. So, and you know, genuinity and within reason as best as I can. So then uh, January 2011, well, if, you know, because I had been engaged to, and then the situations as to those factors, and then I'd only gotten into modeling realistically, not because of October in 2009, that was not it at all. That would be performance aspects. There's a huge difference between performance aspects and modeling huge difference just for that clarification i figured people knew that though maybe that clarification needs to be made right now in the year of 2022 on the 16th of june though i don't know i thought it was common sense back then it is what it is so anyway the aspects i've already explained because of what i had told the civilian recreational scuba divers as to warnings I had told other people, I even told people at Nine Lives Books about that. I had told uh, Daniel and Ken Westmeyer, as far as I was concerned, I was, I was concerned that if I had ever wound up in any area above the Mason-Dixon line that wasn't the state of New Jersey, it would just take one time and it would be an emergency. If there were two times, it would be a red flag emergency, if there's three times that lasted a while, well, <laughs> it would be revolutionary. So, anyway, that was, that was that. So then in, let's see, so January of 2011, while I was re-engaged, I had just saved my fiance's life, whatever number of time at that point. <laughs> You know, and the irony as to when I defended myself, as far as that corona, certain kind of similar situations, unfortunately, as far as I was concerned. And so, you know, he knows what I dealt with that point in time. So, but hey, I did the best I could. And only one time, yet again, the same month. <laughs> Irony, ironies, uh, <laughs> I guess. That was in Austin compared to in the Dallas area. So then the irony of if it wasn't even known that I landed at the bottom of the ocean and surfaced alive or people didn't take it as seriously as to an irony, I don't know who his family is. <laughs> and so, you know, I was kind speaking with him for months in that reference when he was working at MTV and so I have been kind, and so my biological little sister did not like him at all. I figured it was because of, you know, I'm a Republican, and he said he was a Republican, and it's the year 2008 when I met him, if I remember correctly, and it was the year 2009. So those aspects, as far as when we started dating and got engaged, then there's those situations. Mm-hmm. So then, <laughs> so then January of 2011 and all that stuff that was going on at that time. Um, so it was, you know, two years, well, one and a half years since I had been to the Vandenberg, you know, overall area and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, 11 and a, 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 almost 11 years from the time of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, because my head injury was on Palm Sunday in 2000, so that's in April. So it's almost 11 years. It was, it was 10 and three quarter years from that point in time, though it would be like 10 and a half years from waking up from a coma, maybe. It might be 10 and a half, it might be 10 and a quarter years, I don't know. I didn't count at that point. I was just, you know, glad to be alive. <laughs> Doing the best I could, you know, survived a few things by that point. So, you know, it was almost 
So it was like a year, so it was like a, a year and three quarter, or a year and a half since my Vandenberg died and having earned my 26 scuba diving certifications. So, you know, a whole year and a half. And then just a few months down that road, I'd be dealing with Irving. <laughs> as far as that's concerned, pun intended, regarding the road, I guess. So then uh, January of 2012, well, um, well, I had ended the relationship, not, well, so there was who I was engaged to twice, and there was, like, literally, he just kind of didn't ever respond back to me um, at all, I, at, at all whatsoever at that point. And then, um, as far as uh, Valentine's Day, uh, different terminology regarding that, that whole weekend, nothing from him. And so that was, that was it. I haven't heard from him, so went the way it did. So January of 2012, well, that was the end of that relationship as far as Patrick Kennedy, which I didn't even remember his last name until around 2019, 2020. That's when I like, oh yeah, that was that guy's name. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was just kind of whatever. I, eh, eh, what? <laughs> Although there is an irony in reference to Hunter Biden you know, there are certain references as to that, that kind of, I could see Patrick Kennedy kind of in that metaphor as to a few things. I had to be informed, or I shouldn't say I had to, I was explained what cocaine was from Patrick Kennedy. He told me what cocaine was, and he told me about an eight ball, and I thought he was talking about the magic eight ball, and he said something else about that. And so, <laughs> well, that was a failure to communicate really. Cause it was like, what do you mean? And he was like, oh, if you do this or do this. And I didn't understand what he was talking about at all whatsoever. And so, <laughs> yeah. So when I was born and raised in New Jersey in the 1980s and 1990s, what does that have to do with anything? I was a child and a teenager and I thought you know because initially uh, I will acknowledge initially I thought when he said eight ball that he was talking about pool because there's the eight ball and then afterwards then I thought it was the magic eight ball that you kind of whatever which I can make a joke now because of my head injury how that happened because <laughs> the drill sergeant shook me and then threw me into the metal part of the bunk so I mean, it's not really a good joke per se, so I can make fun of that saying that you shake the magic eight ball and then you put it down. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the answer and stuff. Yeah, not really a good answer. Not, 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 it is what it is as far as that's concerned. Nonetheless, he had to explain, and I still, to this day, I still don't understand what he was referring to. So, you know, <laughs> he also made fun of me because I didn't know what a dugout was. I, well, okay, so I knew a dugout had to do with baseball. That's what I knew about. So in the baseball diamond and stuff like that, you got the dugout. And so then he explained to me, because we were in, a, in a, a, a head shop or whatever, and so then I was shown and it was, why, why is it called a dugout? Because I thought, I thought that, I, okay, fine, I can make fun of the fact this was, you know, maybe two years after having you know, my scuba diving situation go on, and it's like, oh, well, you know, in comparison to, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what is, where, do, what do you dig out? I don't understand. And so he had to explain that to me, which, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was only medical for me, so that's why I didn't. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what is this? What? How, how does that work that way? And so, yeah, yeah, the guy behind the counter, he at first was just kind of, oh, well, you know, that's this, no big deal. And then Patrick Kennedy, he goes, oh, no, 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 she has a volcano. And the guy was like, wait, what, you have a volcano? And I was like, shh. 
titties like <laughs> or wait no 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 i didn't have a volcano i had a hot box and he was like you have a hot box i was like yeah i was looking at a volcano i had a volcano once and stuff like and he, how do you not know what a dugout is i know what a dugout is i've played baseball before Baseball's boring though. I, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I don't really like to play it. I, I don't, eh, watching it's okay. Eh. <laughs> I like hockey though. <laughs> they don't call it a dugout though. And then so they laughed at me and it was one of those, what's so funny? I don't get it. <laughs> they were, yeah, no, 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 no. And so then they went into this huge like explanation and it was like, that's nice. I still don't see baseball players, so. <laughs> I, I have a sensation now in 2022 compared to then in 2011 that probably meant something different. And so, yeah, so, you know. <laughs> However, in regards to the 6th of January 2021 hearings on the 16th of June 2022, I don't know if there is a, some sort of meeting in reference to since the end of the relationship with Patrick Kennedy in January of 2012 because he had been upset that I told him how to be a dad and his excuse <laughs> <clears throat> was that I was a mom, so what would I know about being a dad? Even though he knew that my children's biological father died, even though he knew like that I was dealing with what I was dealing with in comparison, you know, but that lack of responsibility that he's ever had in his life realistically, because what would that ever actually amount to if he actually had to be responsible other than the Bank of America Tower situation in comparison. So yeah, he, he tried to claim that he knew about parenting better than me. And so, um, but anyway, so there's that. Uh, January, 2013, well, a bunch of stuff had already occurred by that point in time. Um, there wasn't anybody that I had in my life that I recognized other than my son and then the situations that were going on with my daughter at that point in time and was doing the best I could, but you know, there wasn't anybody that actually was assistive in any capacity to me at all. I mean, there is the 6th of June, in 2013 and so although there's a 6th of June in 2022 regarding a different capacity so you know I, I dealt with that um, so then the month of January in 2014 as I had begun this official YouTube video of mine make sure to subscribe and like my official YouTube videos and share the link to my official YouTube videos. Again, I don't speak for other people. I also don't speak for them to make money. So there's that. So anything, because this is a private residence. And so that's what it's supposed to be in that capacity. So each and every aspect of it's only for my work, not others. Yeah, not willing wasn't that's not a consensual capacity in any way shape or form you know especially with people that i didn't ever consent to or wouldn't ever consent to because that requires actually having a discussion in person face to face in person and the requirements up so in that hypothetical especially when you take in consideration irving in 2011 it's the best don't want to give that misconception at all, right? Want to be truthful. So then uh, January of 2015, well, that was shortly after I had put my website online, mm -hmm, after I had published a few books, which I didn't ask for anybody to get involved with my actual 
books. I didn't want that because I already had my business plan for my books. I knew what I was doing as far as I was concerned. I didn't need any assistance at all. And I didn't want any assistance at all regarding that in any capacity. You know, I, I knew what I was doing and anybody that would want to, they would have to speak with me in truth. And I have not ever consented. And I haven't ever signed any paperwork that would ever allow that in addition for that conjunction to understand that for clarification. And so then I was already working on my Medal of Honor art project trips, as far as my Medal of Honor art project. And I didn't ever inform anybody of what the proper protocol would be regarding my Medal of Honor art project trips. So if people thought it was just no big deal in comparison to what it actually is, well, that's their ignorance. And that's their fault in every capacity of. And so I've been working on that, though I've taken a bit of a break because, you know, um, my book sales are supposed to be capable to assist me to do my own work. I didn't want or need any other people deciding that stuff because I actually have known what was needed. And so I was planning all that stuff. I didn't want anybody else to do that. That wasn't for them to choose. That's my work. And so, you know, those types of those people who think they're that important or they're that ignorant to have thought that I didn't actually know what I was working on in comparison, but you know, that would require people to actually believe that I have the capacity to actually think instead. And so no, I haven't ever given any authority or rights or any aspects of. And again, yes, I do know when I've signed paperwork, thankfully in the updates regarding the 2019, 2020 and 2021 timeframe, most specifically to my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, through my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com, with those clarifications and verifications that have been capable to do so. When I say I remember what the paperwork is, where I signed it, and so on and so forth, I even remember my paperwork in regards to my enlistment paperwork. And since I've brought up that the paperwork that Senator Murray's office or Senator Patty Murray's office got to me, I know for a fact that insurance paperwork is not the way I signed it because it was handwritten at that time. But you know, that would be if my work and my life were to actually be valued and appreciated an actual gratitude for my work in comparison to those types of those people that needlessly do that sort of crap. Because what else is new? It would be different if I didn't have to deal with those types of those people who thought that they were that much more important in comparison. I already grew up with my biological mother and biological father and biological little sister. You know, so if somebody was like, oh, well, whatever, as far as my now dead ex-husband, have you met my biological father? Have you met my biological mother? And have you met my biological little sister? Have you met my ex-in-laws? Have you met people from the state of New Jersey and the tri-state area from the 1980s and 1990s? Be intelligent for that, please. So anyway, as far as that's concerned, because why would any of my work actually be appreciated? Because in order to actually appreciate my work, it's not by your standards, it's through my standards, not yours. And so that's a big deal as far as that's concerned. But nobody's actually ever had the common sense to just ask me, you know, because that's, that's what it requires. So since I haven't been asked with etiquette and respect, just has uh, been what it's been. So then in reference to the year of 2016 in January, while well, I was still working on my Medal of Honor art project trips, though I was volunteering at Club Sapphire at that point in time and those situations 
And then January of 2017, same thing, volunteering at Sapphire while still taking care of my son as best as I could, while doing the best I could for my daughter, despite the situations, while working on my website, www.susanmuelling.com, same as www.ladyjorybell.com, and other factors such as my Medal of Honor art project and other books. And so again, unlike what hypothetically, no, that, might, that person would have to be so vain to actually think that I ever wrote that book about them because in reality, I was just being creative. That would be a delusional individual. I don't know what would be a problem for that person other than just pure delusion. Then again, if it is prophetic, well, <laughs> I did have a nightmare when I was in second grade. I've predicted a few things, and irony to the 6th of January uh, situation in 2021, I murmured underneath my breath about how it seemed like people would be safer not in the building and I didn't speak with anybody or anything like that for clarifications, although that would be capable to be known, obviously. I just had this weird energetic sensation and you know, it just, hmm, just seems that way. And then I verified it a few ways because I have that capacity and I got the clarifications before I murmured it. So, you know, it is as it is. Anyway, so then in reference to um, January of 2018, well, that was after the solar eclipse in 2017, and um, well, I didn't even get to celebrate my birthday at all even with that, because you know, instead of actually getting to do anything where I actually do it my way, in comparison, you know, there were those problems as far as that situation. Didn't get to have the stromboli the way I wanted to because I got annoyed by all these other situations where it's like, you know, it would be great to actually do something where I actually get to enjoy without having needless problems. One celebration, you know, is it really that difficult to just celebrate something at all? Like, what is wrong with you people? You know, either actually ask me how to do it, or if not, get out of my way so I can. That'd be, go that'd be great, that'd be awesome, instead of what I have dealt with needlessly. You know, it's just one of those situations where I have made attempt after attempt Random, everything from little itty bitty celebrations to massively huge celebrations. You people, I swear, it is an annoyance when it comes to that. I'm just saying. It you know, really truthfully is. So, you know, I've made attempts of every type. And instead of anybody actually doing things correctly or even asking, it really is an annoyance when it comes to that because you seem to think you know how it is to actually celebrate in comparison to what I know by my own preferences in comparison to what you think I would prefer. So, you know, there just hasn't been one time, not once, that I've even got to enjoy, not once just because you selfish individuals, my personal opinion. Not once. It'd be great to be capable to that I have made every attempt and so it's just one of those, well, why, you know, <laughs> at that point, it's just why bother even hoping to actually do so. It just, it's really that simple. I've made, I mean, you know, because all people would actually have to do is speak with me in comparison to any other capacity. That is the best way to do so, by asking me, not asking other people. You won't get the answer correctly when it comes to what I actually view as a celebration, okay? So, you know, but instead, and no, no, don't go and read prior stuff as to what I was going to do. That's those times in the past, you know, in comparison to the future and stuff. So, you know, that's 2018, and I did what I could to remain calm because I was pissed off the entire time that I didn't even get to just have one little, one, one small, just one 
just one. No, no, no. Other people had their feelings or whatever their damn situations were in comparison to what I had wanted to do for myself for once. Just something just you know i brought up oh you know i literally said there's no one who should be there that was not an invitation that was not a challenge if i challenge you i will tell you in person face to face in person or i'll put it in writing if i don't put it in writing and or i don't tell you in person face to face in person guess what and I mean in person, face to face in person with me. Not regarding technology, no, no, no. You know, since there's those types of those people that have apparently needed that clarification. So, you know, then, then there's, then there's, <laughs> January of 2019 and an irony around a phone call time as to a few factors. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, January 2020, well, I published a few more books. I had been working on the updates to my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, through my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. And, um, well, huh, 2019 went the way it did, and then 2020 went the way it did. And not to be rude, I'm just saying now in 2022, I mean, sure, I got certain energetic factors, didn't see it to that level, you know, well, I saw it to that level when I was in DC area, Virginia area in January of 2021 regarding my sight and vision and stuff. However, um, when you look back to the rallies in 2020 and all of the riots that occurred, I mean, it's kind of common sense if you look at that, you know, I, I mean, you can even look through my journal blog updates, the ordinary PSA on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, same as www.ladydorybell.com. You know, you could see that metaphor in regards of my journal blogs during the time frame of or about, you know, there's an elections area that you can take in consideration. However, you know, I don't know how other elected individuals didn't see how that was going to go. I mean, did you think it was just in the state of Texas that that was going on? Or did you not have any references anywhere else? Yeah, but it is as it is. Yeah. I mean, there's also the stuff that occurred in reference to my daughter, my son, and I that started in the state of Texas as far as that in-person, face-to-face, in-person stuff. So, you know, not rocket science when you really think about it. Although I acknowledge I didn't have the vision of stuff occurring as far as, and then the clarification and verifications energetically until January of 2021 when I was in the area a few days before, but I didn't want to overreact, so. And besides who would I have spoken with, you know, similar to a few other situations. So I went around and had a, I'd made a few, well, I don't know how to put it. I, I knew who to speak with, though you probably didn't see me speak with anybody, as far as that's concerned. So, um, as far as, you know, if you believe in those factors as to energetic situations and sight. So then, you know, then there's January 2022. And well, you know, the situation's the 6th of January 2021. Well, you know, I've been working on a few things that I've been making attempts for a few years. So uh, January 6th of 2021, 
was um, eight years and um, five days before the 11th of September 20 year memorial. And so I did make attempts, as you can see through my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. I did make attempts to transfer sooner so that way I could actually get work done. But, you know, similarly, you know, to any celebratory aspects, you know, just the, the situations of like if people just didn't cause needless problems and you know that sort of stuff that would that would have been great in reference to you know when I got back from but you know uh, I, I don't need to actually explain anything to anybody you know in regards of my work because it's my work and so my business is my business and since I'm not in a dating relationship I don't actually have to explain anything at all. That's, that's kind of a big deal. And so while I could have done a lot of work in comparison, so yeah, okay, fine, in 2020, the Space Force was formated, and okay, fine, during that time, I took a bunch of videos and pictures, which I still would have been capable to do, though I could have also been working on, you know, the stuff that, you know, I did. I'd already planned, so, you know. But, you know, instead, you know, in comparison, it took as long as it did to transfer in comparison, and then, you know, having to get stuff taken care of in comparison, and then, you know, if, if I, you know, because I dealt with a speeding ticket in regards of a situation, and if, that event that I had actually went to attend, um, if I had actually done so, I could have done some other work in comparison. But you know, you know, I, I didn't have any reason to put it in writing because you know it's my work instead. So you know, I tend to actually know what I'm doing in comparison, and so since I don't have that requirement to put it in writing or murmur about it or talk about it with anybody because that is not a requirement that's just not um, and other factors so you know I went to go take care of stuff in comparison and so you know common sense you know it's so instead I didn't get to work on that because I had to drive back and then I dealt with other stuff in comparison after the transfer and stuff like that finally went through. And so, you know, it's one of those, those types of those people. Well, again, it's not your business. I didn't ask you to get involved with my work. You know, my work is my work. It's not your work. And so sure, you might have some connected aspect, but that doesn't mean it's your work. It's still my work. And so, you know, there are a few factors as far as that's concerned. So I didn't get to do any of that much. However, you know, I posted a few pictures regarding my paintings because, you know, if I actually had the time to do what I actually needed to in comparison to other people in the way, um, you know, it's almost like, you know, any you know what? January 6th is a really good viewpoint. Every time I've gone to take care of stuff that I don't need somebody's help for to get done, well, it's kind of like that and it's really annoying, you know, in comparison to when I actually have needed assistance, you'd think that in regards of when I actually need assistance, it would be better for that and not in that capacity though, in comparison. And so, you know, um, <laughs> just is as it is and since that uh, particular <laughs> stuff in comparison. So in the hearings, now that I've gone through that metaphor sort of stuff. So in the hearings, they brought up January 6th, of course, but then December, you know, and September. Well, September, there goes to the work that I was referring to as to getting answers and putting stuff together and would have been capable to have the actual video footage, photo evidence at the same time. But you know, those, 
those situations where, you know, I was working on stuff and those factors in comparison, because, you know, sure, I know I'm not the only person that knows that answers need to occur, but you know what? In order for me to go and get answers, I don't need needless problems. And so, you know, <laughs> that's kind of a big deal. And then, you know, I, I, and, and for, you know, the aspects, actual assistance of the correct capacities, well, it has to be the correct capacities into comparison to what other people think is correct instead. And so, you know, then there's that. And so those situations as far as that's concerned. You know, instead of other people thinking that they know better, you know, it goes back to the saying that they brought about regarding my pens. Mm -hmm. Nobody else should be making the decisions for me regarding my own work because I know my own work in a different reference point. So there's that. And then, uh, you know, and then if one, you know, those hearings, they happen in person. Apparently, you know, they have the showing where it has people gathered together and for, well, my work is my work and I'm not working with anybody <laughs> in person, face to face in person. There's a difference, obviously, in those capacities and so I'm real particular on things. I really am the modern day book through my book section, website, www.susanreeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. Yeah, yeah, so I've made attempts to do things in regards of in, in the ways that I figured would be best. And you know, no one has actually approached me, you know, with etiquette and respect in regards of any aspect of, because that would be important to do it in that capacity. Because I don't like surprises. You know, when you do the work that I've done as far as the oceanic waters, surprises are not a good idea <laughs> at all <laughs> it's best to talk with me in comparison it's it's safest to do it that way in comparison to speaking with anybody else because you know with my type of work and so if it wasn't known regarding even though i told people about i grew up going out to the atlantic area the oceanic waters out of you know, New Jersey. I don't understand. I've, I've, in the year 2009, I told people, I don't know how you view scuba diving as romantic. I don't know what more of a sign you need than that. But you know, <laughs> yeah, it just is as it is, because you know, <laughs> I just don't see that, because I haven't ever seen where that would ever be romantic because of my type of scuba diving in comparison, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the water, as far as that, yeah, 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 and swimming, I haven't ever understood how anybody, but you know, that's, that's, that's for them, you know, as far as that, <laughs> personally, I don't need to understand why anybody would think that that would be that way, but that's me, <laughs> I don't, have, I don't have that innate, you know, sort of aspect in comparison, I have enough experience to know better. <laughs> I do, I do. Which would be an irony in regards to, as to the metaphors regarding 2019, 2020, 2021, all that sort of stuff with one guy in regards of one situation and how that went, and then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> different situation. Then another one thinking that they have a right to something that they don't. And then, you know, contacting and being like, hey, well, you know, hope for the best as far as that's concerned. And Rick Hars the irony of the Vice President of the United States of America, as far as that name is concerned. And so, yeah, yeah, so I've done a bunch of updating. And so they brought up Al Gore. And Al Gore was Vice President of the United States of America in the year that I had fought to be in the Army, in the year of 1999. Uh, which was also in the year 2000 that I fought to be in the army. However, he also was vice president of the United States of America when I had been invited to Marine and Science Technology School. And so there's that. He was also vice president of the United States of America, if I remember correctly, in the year of 1993. And so 
There was a situation in New York City at the World Trade Center garage, and I had similarly I had a vision, and or it was I called it a nightmare because I was in second grade at the time. And my babysitter's husband, Joe Jose Castro, he had been a director of security in the area, and so uh, I did runs to area you know through the areas to make attempts what it was was to the security tightening for that so um, i'd be given a little device i'd go run and then you know <laughs> at a certain amount of time and they the little doohickey mabob tracking would see which way and which floors and all that sort of stuff and um, then all the security guys would have their meeting and kind of figure ways to make security better in comparison because of a few factors. Which you can see a different capacity as to Austin in 2020 regarding those rallies and riots and later as far as I was concerned, which I did write about in regards to my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, through my website, www.susanmewling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. That's about the same sort of situation that Joe Jose would do, though for the World Trade Center and World Trade Center Plaza. So in that reference, for those who don't know, it, the rallies initially started at the Austin State Capitol building. And then, you know, then there were security guards that showed up. And then slowly, um, there, it was on the outside of the gates from there, and then, and then there were law enforcement guys, and then slowly the National Guard showed up. That's stuff that like Joe Jose would, would do in regards to after my runs, you know, or I'd make suggestions or what have you, and that's kind of, that's usually how that went, but inside the World Trade Center and World Trade Center Plaza, I just kind of take off and go. <laughs> And then, you know, usually I was picked up. And not in a bad way. <laughs> I was usually, so usually what happened is, you know, Joe Jose would be like, all right, Susana, go. All right. <laughs> go running. <laughs> and I'd run and run and all that sort of stuff. And then at some point, one of the, it's kind of funny in, in a different capacity as to the, Bank of America Tower <laughs> in Dallas. <laughs> Not in reference, well, the females, yes, but in reference to one of the males, I think that was one of the males that I had met in uh, 2011. So that would kind of be what occurred. So, you know, just kind of in comparison to me speaking with him, but he did. And so he kind of, <laughs> one of the guys that would be one of Joe Jose's guys who would essentially just, okay, Susanna, and oh, hi. Hi, oh, you caught me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, okay, come on, it's time to go review everything. And then, you know, <laughs> they usually were wearing whatever suits, as far as I was concerned. Not the same type of suits that he had and the other guys had, but kind of irony of ironies. And then, okay, Susan, or, well, depending him. All right, Susan, and then Joe Jose, like, Susanna, how did you get all the way up the stairs? How did you do that? So it's not because he was from, you know, Dominican Republic area of something. So Susanna, how'd you do that? How'd you go by the security guard? And so, <laughs> well, you know, he wasn't looking. <laughs> Pretty much how that went. <laughs> it's pretty much that that's it's how that went. And so, you know, and then the, the guy, whoever would come and pick me up, is like, all right, yeah, she, you know, let's let's go take a look at this. And then they'd go through the <laughs> do Hickey Mabob device of whatever with all the information and wow, how did you so you just decided that you why did you take that? And then I go through all the details as far as why I went, which route I went and stuff like that. So that's, that's the type of director of security and security director as far as World Trade Center and World Trade Center Plaza as far as that kind of, that, that guy. That's why when it came to 2011, it's like, why would you ever think that you could ever do that if you didn't know? Because if I knew that the phone line that I was called on was a landline, 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why I was like, uh, 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 I know exactly how Joe Jose would have been. Uh, 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 uh. No, you better make amends with Joe Jose. Woo! You better do that. Yeah, you better. Not the exact same women. Uh, uh, you write a check and you better, you better, and you better. Uh, uh, because, uh, 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 uh. And I actually made the recommendation of, I told him you should just round off the number and, and give, you know, because of interest, because of depending on how they did the payments and stuff like that. And he was like, oh, whatever. And then he got mad and it's like, yeah, well, it's your fault for if I knew that. And so he got all upset because I told him to take responsibility for his stupidity because I knew what type of phone line that was regarding that. And so I was like, whoa, no, 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 I didn't realize, uh, 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 I am not getting in trouble for what you did. Oh, no, 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 uh, uh, I know what type of, you know, it's, it's a smaller tower by far in comparison to the World Trade Center and the World Trade Center Plaza. Mm, -mm no, uh, 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 I'm not getting in trouble for you. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. That's why when the guys showed up to the apartment in, in the first early Irving apartment compared to the second Irving apartment because the second Irving apartment is where that occurred. It was one of those, do you guys want coffee? I got no problem making you guys coffee. I, 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 I know that you guys were kind of like my babysitter's husband. I don't want to get in trouble because I know what happened when he got angry. So, you know, you guys good? You guys good? Okay, cool, cool, cool. I will stay outside. <laughs> Because, ah, uh, because, ah, uh, no, I know it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, it's not the World Trade Center or the World Trade Center Plaza. It's the Bank of America Tower. That's fine. Excuse me, I will not be in your way. No, no, no. You yell at him all you want. Have fun with that. You let him know how stupid he is. Yes, you do that. I'm going to go over here. You sure you don't want me to make you coffee? Because I can make some, I can make a good cup of coffee. It's fine. It's fine. I ain't never <laughs> You know, I've done it. I've made a cup of coffee a time or two. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. No, it's okay. <laughs> so it was as it was, but yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, though it would be irony in reference to the, the Trump-Pence situation as far as, you know, <laughs> Uh, wishful thinking regarding Patrick is fine. No, 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 and no. By the way, no. Oh, and did I say no? Because no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I suppose a bit of an irony again into 2019 for that particular metaphor. As far as that's concerned, in that reference, because, yeah, <laughs> no, uh-uh, yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 and, 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 I didn't even remember his last name, <laughs> which is funny, because there's that Carrie Underwood song, it's like, I don't know that guy's last name, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, though hopefully that situation regarding my daughter's paperwork isn't a problem any further and she's actually capable to get that stuff taken care of correctly. Instead of such immaturity and needless problems any further regarding that type of garbage. You know, that'd be better. So anyway, um, in reference to the 2020 situ or 2000 situation with the 6th of January 2021 hearings on the 16th of June 2022, they brought up Al Gore. And I brought up the Y2K situation where there was a lot of stuff that was going on in regarding to the coding. And those factors, my biological mother in the year of 2001, after the attack on the 11th of September, 2001, when I was on the phone with her, 
after, and I had she had no idea I was talking with uh, military guys at, at all. She had no idea, or I said one military guy, and um, whatchamacallit, uh, the USPS and a few other individuals regarding recommendations and suggestions at that time frame. <clears throat> um, she had no idea that I was doing that. Well, <laughs> lo and behold, she goes and tells me that she knew that an entire floor of people that were in one of the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center had survived. The entire floor survived. And then a few days later, my son was in the hospital at Wilford Hall, and I have, I've already described some of that. So, <clears throat> in that reference, well, the Bank of America Tower is small. So the Bank of America Tower in downtown Dallas, that's small. That wouldn't even be a connector area as far as the width dimensions for the World Trade Center. That Bank of America Tower would be like a food court in comparison for one of the eh sized towers in the World Trade Center Plaza. Like, as far as the overall, like, and, and it would, and, 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 and you'd actually have to take two or two, two floors to put them side by side, and that would be like the food court area for one of the, I don't want to say medium sized towers, definitely wasn't one of the larger towers for certain. And so there's that. I mean, one of the smaller towers in the World Trade Center, for those who know the Capitol building in Austin, Texas, if you were to take the entire perimeter of the outside, that's like the entrance area to one of the sections regarding the subway system for the entire perimeter. That's, I mean, granted, there's the way you get to that vicinity, but because of one of the areas to the World Trade Center Plaza, in reference, there were several of these particular sections, uh, and one of the areas, that entire perimeter of the entire aspect of I don't want to say the entire grounds perimeter, but so like probably about halfway of the grounds as to a rectangular-ish. That's, that's pretty much one of the entrance areas to the subway system in the World Trade Center Plaza. I can't remember which station that particularly was, but there were, if I remember correctly, for that size, that was one of the smaller ones. Um, considering small, um, uh, hmm, probably be uh, from what I can remember, because I didn't usually go in that vicinity. So I, I, have, I, I could only see from the top part area when doing my runs. Uh, if I remember correctly, that had, uh, I think it was about, I think you could see from the top of the stairs when running by, although again, with people as to the rails that went down, I think you could see about maybe six or seven lines as far as the subway system down there, as far as the tracks from the, from the top area to look down. Um, the World Trade Center Plaza was much larger than just the World Trade Center, so by a lot. Uh, so much more. It's not just the Twin Towers, as far as that's concerned. Although in reference to Washington, D.C., this is something I'm aggravated about regarding my transfer. So the sound, as far as when checking certain things, not just in, re not, and it's not really even in reference to my own voice, it's more in reference to the amount of people because in the 1980s and 1990s, I didn't go to the area very often, but that amount of people used to be common. And not where they all gathered in the same area regarding the ellipse on the 6th of January, 2021, but in, a, in, in kind of a way, because uh, not 
So if you didn't have the uh, speaker area with the stage and stuff like that, and you took the people that were outside of that area and just kind of spread them around, that would be the average to the few times that I've been out there as a child. I, I was told I have what's called a photographic memory or something like that. And then something in reference to hearing or of something like along those lines, I can't remember what it's called, on top of sight and actual sight or, well, spiritual sight, I guess, whatever, mediumship and stuff. And so the, the, the Washington Monument was much, much taller, much, 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 much taller. The Bank of America Tower, downtown Dallas, that was taller. I think that, so like the tower, so that's actually the best perimeter for the reference to the Washington Monument is a little bit um, wider, but that square aspect, probably about, so there's the, if you take the sidewalk, that's pretty much the outside of what the Washington Monument was. And from what I remember, again, I didn't go there very often, but it was it was about that. So people who could go to the downtown, you know, I don't recommend being rude and make sure, but those who have the capacity to that have been to the Washington Monument and the pre-2001 time frame, it's about the, if I remember, because of walking around the outside as a child. And so in the year of 2011, you know, having driven from Austin area all the way to the Dallas area and, you know, that kind of drive and people who drive a long time, they have that understanding. So it's not the same as being a child, but the movement as far as the amount and stuff like that. And so that's the, with the, with the sidewalk, that'd be about the outside part as to with the sidewalk to the Washington Monument. That's what it would it sense as as far as that's concerned, and it was taller. And then the the bricks, they were all one color. They were marbleized. They were, so for those who saw, they were heavily marbleized. So for those who remember my original um, backdrop for my journal blog, the ornery PSA, as far as the marbleized look, that was more what the blocks looked as for the Washington Monument in the 1980s, 1990s time frame. Me, I, I know it was only once when it was the 1980s regarding the Washington Monument and or Washington DC area. There were two or three times in the 1990s as to the Washington DC area. And so then there was the sound in reference to where I had sang um, in the ellipse area where there was the monument and stuff. I don't remember that from when I was younger. I don't know where that came from, but I don't remember that having been there when I was younger um, at all. So I don't know if that's new or not, but if it is new, then that makes sense. If it's not, if, it, if, if, it's, if it's not new, I don't remember it. And again, you know, I mean, I was a child and before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, and you know, I, memory deficits and cognitive disorders, but the sound, the sound, I don't, I don't remember that sound. That's why I actually went out to that area to actually sing because it made no sense to me why I was hearing things uh, audibly certain ways. And so uh, that, that fountain, well, I shouldn't say fountain, um, that, uh, well, that area, it just, I don't remember that there when in the night, especially in the 1990s, I don't remember that at all in that vicinity. And so the sound, hearing people talking and all that sort of stuff, that didn't make any sense whatsoever. And so, yeah, that was some, and then I wanted to also check out a few things when I went to make attempts after the transfer, but that was as it was, I also wanted to see what the Pentagon looked like at night because I remembered seeing something when I was a child back in the time frame of, and then I couldn't find the DC aquarium. So they used to have one in Washington, DC. 
I know that they have the Virginia Aquarium, but there was a Washington DC Aquarium. And so I don't know what happened there, but they had only exotic animals in that one. All of them were, um, well, they had three albino crocodiles and they were, they were, you know, they weren't full grown, but they weren't babies. And so there was getcha, gotcha, and good as far as that. And then um, they also had a few um, rare birds uh, in a, you know, kind of enclosed-ish sort of thing. And then they also had, um, I mean, they had other ones that were considered, you know, exotic and specialty breeds, but the albino crocodiles were my favorite. <laughs> and so um, then there was, what was it? There was also, there was one particular, there were a few that were in there that were kind of, I mean, they weren't uncommon, but they definitely weren't common. And I can't remember what species they were, uh, specifically birds. And, um, and they, were, they were larger birds. They were larger than macaw birds. I don't know what type of birds they were, but they were colorful and they were larger than macaws with the tail. So there was that. Um, then that was one that I, I, I had, <laughs> I thought that was a cute little bird. I mean, granted, granted, okay. Well, the perception as to what little is, but it's a little bird. <laughs> so cute. Its <laughs> beak was huge. It's a little baby. And so then, um, what else was there? They had a few, you know, aquatic other areas. You know, as aquariums do, but um, they had a, they had a few. I mean, you have sharks that are in a lot of locations, but they had one particular shark. Oh, it's a cute little baby. I mean, again, perspective a little. Yeah, I remember it was bigger than Getcha, Gotcha, and Good combined in length. It's a cute little shark. <laughs> it's a little baby shark. It was so cute. It's a little. It's only, I think it was only like five or six years old, whatever species breed it was in the 1990s. And so that, there was that. And uh, so, but yeah, there was, so, this is a little <laughs> So anyway, so the, to back, back to those factors as to the January 6th hearings or 6th January, 2021 hearings, Today, the 16th of January, 2022, so they did bring up Al Gore and the Florida uh, situation as far as that's concerned in the year 2000. Well, the Y2K was only known in 1999. If I remember, they started talking about it in the news in October, maybe November. They were working on the Y2K situation in 1997. That's when, in regards of coding, that actually had begun. Um, you know, when I should have been a sophomore at Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, just saying. <laughs> just saying. Anyway, so there, that, that was when that was begun more officially in certain uh, those who have technology companies they, they they're those guys who understand that and so they had several groups in different areas and so there was that as far as that the the initial initial guys began in january if i remember correctly it was january of 1997 as to the y2k situations and then um, so then I brought up certain factors and since there's the references regarding election situations, um, and then I don't know when, so in reference to certain hotels, more commonly 
nowadays. You have the capability for Wi-Fi. I don't know in the year of 2000 if there were hotels nearby and those references regarding voting situations as to the booths. So there's the Dominion software and a few other situations that's been brought forward in regards of not the same, though kind of similar to the 20 or 2000 election and what Al Gore, the Vice President of the United States of America at that time. And so I don't know who had what hotels or resorts because in certain locations, you know, it depends on the type, but back in the year 2000, there's, there are those differences. Um, and then, so that's something to take in consideration just because of the reminder regarding Al Gore, or Vice President of the United States of America at that time, Al Gore. And then um, something that else during the hearings that had caught my attention. Um, it was uh, something in reference to um, I have given the metaphors of everything that's that can be correlated as to some of the stuff that was brought up though. In regards of Al Gore uh, in the year 2000, if I remember correctly, it wasn't just Florida that had a situation as far as that was concerned. And so then there is an irony regarding Vice President of the United States of America 48, Kamala Harris, and the signs in Texas during the year of 2020 regarding that particular election, because there are certain factors that um, Vice President of the United States of America takes care of in comparison to the President of the United States of America and those particular factors and those references. And then there are those situations as to the 2020 election, the Space Force, having been officially signed in, in the official, 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 because of however many signatures before getting to the President of the United States of America, obviously. And so, and then, you know, those particular factors. But there's the Tic Tac video regarding the Navy. That's more, more current in time frame but there's been a few other situations. And so um, I did bring up the factors of the honesty in regards to my journal blog, The Honorary PSA, my website, www.susanelang.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com because of the need to that. So in 2021, the announcement later or later in 2020 I think it was around maybe September of 2020 is when T-Mobile and Sprint started uh, having commercials in regards of the merger that occurred on the 6th of June 2022 to take in consideration to the other factors and so then because there was something that occurred back in, it wasn't just the Y2K in the year 2000 before 2001 to keep in mind. So there is that fact to think about. So if in reference to scuba diving and those situations, well, as it is in regards of, and then, you know, storage unit situations regarding my stuff, the U-Haul factors, you know, it's um, not anything great as far as that's concerned, no matter what some might think. Though it is kind of a viewpoint when you take in consideration to the attacks on the 11th of September 2001, you only know 
about the ones that you know and there is those particular factors as to the Statue of Liberty. So there's that viewpoint. And when you take in consideration in regards of 2009, how many, and people would know regarding the civilian recreational scuba divers compared to myself, I mean, there is that factor that I brought forward regarding the Statue of Liberty. And I had called a guy um, which is an irony in certain regards, uh, not just because he's in New Jersey, New York, though also his name is an irony from what I was told. Nonetheless, um, because if you take in consideration the physical viewpoint of not just the Washington Monument, that's what it was. That's the, I was working on remembering. So, um, I had wanted to go out to New Jersey and I had told some civilian recreational scuba divers that I had been making attempts to go out to New Jersey and as to quite a few things and a bunch of these civilian recreational scuba divers, well, again, my then fiance would know as far as I was concerned and then there's 2019. And so the Statue of Liberty is much smaller. The, Liberty Science Center, you had to use a, so I went out to the lighthouse area on Long Island and there were those in regards to on Liberty Science Center on the top floor where there was an open balcony and you could, you had to do the quarters to be capable to see the Statue of Liberty. Otherwise you could only see the top of the torch and the top of the crowd as far as the spikes couldn't actually see the statue itself the way you can now from that area at all. That wasn't, that, that was not at all, nowhere. And all you have to do is literally take a look at the signs regarding the tollway and the turnpike and the different charges. So, you know, the ferries and all that sort of stuff. So there's that to take in consideration. So, you know, if you take in thought process as to the complaint about tips, even though, you know, those types of, those types. And so, cause it's an expensive area for many reasons. And so if in that capacity of, well, Dem Democrat and all that in comparison to the reality, um, I do remember that being that way in comparison to what I saw in February of 2022 to be most specific in that regard. And so then there's January of 2022. It's an irony regarding planning to go out to that area and stuff like that. And so, and then there's Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year used to see a lot of those factors. So if people watched how the dragon dance regarding, you know, like cheerleaders, but in scuba diving in a different capacity for that kind of viewpoint, whether in reference to the Washington Monument and or other factors that you can utilize the viewpoint of the 6th of January 2021 to the Statue of Liberty in reference to the World Trade Center, the World Trade Center Plaza, that's a plausible aspect to take in consideration in conjunction. Because in the time frame of the 1993 attack on the World Trade Center, that was just the World Trade Center, that wasn't the World, I mean, the World Trade Center was part of the World Trade Center Plaza but there were other parts of the World Trade Center Plaza that weren't a part of the World Trade Center. And so the World Trade Center Plaza being a plaza much bigger. And so the World Trade Center Plaza was massive compared to the World Trade Center. World Trade Center, you had um, a few sets of twin towers and some connecting areas. World Trade Center Plaza though, that was, um, if I remember correctly, 
the entire size of the World Trade Center Plaza was in each of the five boroughs as far as the exterior perimeter. I forget which areas were the specific perimeter lines, but they were in all five of the boroughs as far as the way it was arranged. Remember that. So, um, because it's kind of like, uh, there's an area in the United States of America that's called the Four Corners. And so, because of the four states, so in the World Trade Center Plaza, it, you, but you didn't have the ease that you have in the Four Corner reference. World Trade Center Plaza, you had to know which areas, as far as I was concerned, and they had certain situations arranged for security at that point in time. So there's that. So after the third day of hearings regarding the 6th of January, 2021, on the 16th of June, 2022, if there were people, you know, similar to how my biological mother had said that she knew an entire floor of people that had been in the World Trade, one of the Twin Tower, I don't remember if she said whichever tower she said, but she said that they were in one of the Twin Towers, which if you didn't know the World Trade Center and or the World Trade Center Plaza, saying the Twin Towers, well, there's there's a few. There, there's, there's a few. It's not just the ones that are most well known, it, but you have to know security. You, you'd have had to physically run it because it wasn't necessary. It might have been in blueprints, possibly, but in reference to the only way you know is the security sort of situations because security guys know everything, as anybody knows. <laughs> security guys have all, <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a few who understand that a little bit better <laughs> than I can put it to words as far as that's concerned. And so, um, <clears throat> but she had said on the phone, when I, if I remember correctly, she was at, even at the McHenry County Government Center. <sighs> so the entire floor, and so if they were in one of the Twin Towers, as far as the known Twin Towers, that, that are the two tallest at that point, which I read online, a hundred something, no. Uh, <laughs> No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That, the, the Twin Towers, those two really, really tall ones, if I remember correctly, those were over, that was something like 165 stories, maybe 175 stories tall, if I remember correctly, almost 200 stories, if I remember, some, something like, no, actually, I think those two specifically, I think they were 215 stories tall each, something along those lines. They were not under a hundred stories, no. Not those, definitely not, not, not the silver ones, absolutely not. No, the silver ones were not under, they, they were not under 160 stories tall, absolutely not. No, 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 no. Not from what I remember, because, you know, but then again, there were a lot of complaints regarding um, people who lived in the city hearing the airplanes and the rattling of the windows because it didn't matter whether it was a private airplane or a commercial airplane. And so there was that. Um, and then they complained a lot because, you know, those factors, especially the upper stories, as far as I was concerned, so they complained a lot. And um, I mean, I, I'm sure if you look at some of, from some of the pictures I've seen regarding Beijing and Hong Kong, they have some taller buildings. And, and from the, the little that I've seen in pictures, it's kind of the way New York City was as far as the closeness 
of the buildings because just from the small little drive through that I went through, uh, no, 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 no. Those streets looks, I, I don't, you know, I, I know I was concerned about driving through those streets when I spoke with uh, Michael on the phone. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. And if he was wondering why and or whoever he was chauffeuring for was like, well, why would she be concerned about driving through? Oh, because I remember the streets in the 1980s and 1990s. What I drove through, I didn't drive through much. That, that was, that was, that was simple. I, 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 I mean, that, that's not anything at all from what I remember at all regarding downtown in New York City. And it doesn't matter which borough either. There was a few sections in New York City where it was literally, so people who know the, the Navy compass sort of thing, that was literally one of the street sections as far as like all of the, try making a left hand turn, which light, which way, how you did, oh, it was, oh, that was what I was concerned about because of safety. Yeah, yeah, as far as when I had made that uh, phone call where I was like, yeah, no, no, I don't want to drive down there. You know, I know how it is. I, I remember how those streets are. And so, yeah, no, the, even the subway system, as far as some of the smaller entrances that I saw, uh, I, I mean, I'd have to, that particular section is, it's, it's, it's it, it, that New York City is not difficult to drive through compared to what I remember. And I was a passenger as a child. So I remember, and so those who have met my biological father, and you think that he had anger at any point in time? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, driving in New York City in the 1980s and 1990s, or him driving in New York, and he had been an EMS driver and a taxi cab driver, and the 19, I think he said it was late 1970s and then into the 1980s and then he was doing his work as far as the stuff regarding the school of Bulova certified aspects as to uh, Bulova watches and Seiko watches and Rolex watches and Movado watches and all those clocks and stuff. So yeah, no, 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 uh, from actually driving, whereas I'd only know them from as a passenger, as far as I was concerned. So yeah, no, those, that was so easy to see. So I wouldn't be surprised in some ways if Mike had tried telling Anna and Patricia that, and Anna and Patricia be like, no, no, it's the same, blah, 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 blah. And no, 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 those streets, no, 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 absolutely no. I know my biological father would probably agree on that and be like, what the, that's, no, because even the, the height of the buildings from the Liberty Science Center area, oh no, and Anna didn't ever drive in New York City. Anybody who's ever been in a car with her when she drives, no, no. No. <laughs> no. 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 She didn't ever drive. She wouldn't even drive in a parking garage in New York City. I'm sure Mike could probably go on about that. And then <laughs> Trisha? No. <laughs> she First off, she's four years younger than me. So there's that. Second, no, she'd probably freak out in a parking garage. She probably couldn't even handle driving in Washington, D.C. So, that's, so if, she, if she were to ever try to drive in Washington, D.C. and, you know, ah, ah, and then like have to pull over, but then all that sort of, yeah, no, 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 because she didn't grow up in, a, in, in the capacity that I had. So yeah, no, 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 because usually what I did, because like, you can tell by this especially, so I would keep an eye out. I was always the lookout for parking spots, parking garages, all that sort of stuff, as far as what I'd notice 
Yeah, no, no, no. I'd be like, oh, you know, don't bother with this one because this one has the sign that's whatever because, you know, there was different. Back in the 1980s especially, if it got to a certain number, uh, below, like if it got below, I think for certain garages, if it got below 50, they would put a different color sign out and you had to pay attention to that in comparison. And so you, you, you had to look for that and so, yeah, no, uh-uh, no, 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 that's <laughs> uh-uh, they had that, so especially in the 1980s and, and then the 1990s, yeah, that was a big thing in the 1990s because of the way the garages were. And so, yeah, no, 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 and parking. Yeah, no, 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 there wasn't any grass in New York City except for in Central Park. That was the only area in the end. Like you didn't even have trees unless you had them in a potted plant. That was it regarding New York City in the 1980s and 1990s. It was a cement um, macadam as far as the roadways. There weren't really parks. You have, you have more parks with grass in downtown Austin than you had in New York City in the 1980s and 1990s. Because the parks in New York City were cement flats with whatever playground. <laughs> like it was actual cement or actual macadam and then whatever, you know, metal structure. <laughs> You didn't have the luxury of, you know, the little mulch chips or whatever. You had cement. <laughs> you were in a good neighborhood if you had macadam. And you were in a really good neighborhood if you had the recycled tires that for the, for the, for the floor. <laughs> as far as whichever borough from the 1980s and 1990s. And so I'm just... I'm just gonna point that out there for anybody. You know, maybe at college campuses they had grass, but that's about it. Yeah, not in the general public areas. In the general public areas, no, <laughs> not at all, no. <laughs> which would be irony, I guess. Maybe I could see a bunch of, which not a surprise at the same time, bunch of college students. Oh, this is so wonderful. So great. <laughs> New York City is fantastic. <laughs> and then they go and move out into the real New York City. And then they're educated as to what the real New York City is. <laughs> Yeah, I could easily see that being a little bit of a mind fuck at that point. <laughs> Cause yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. New York City in the 1980s and 1990s, the only grass you saw was in planters. Like people actually would just grow grass. Just, <laughs> just to say like there were, there were these people. Well, I can't remember which borough. They'd be like, hey, you want to come over? I have a patch of grass, you know? And they, and they were like, you know, they were all like totally whatever about it. And it was literally like those, well, you have these puppy pad situations. And that's pretty much what they did in New York City to be like, yeah, I've got a lawn. <laughs> It's three foot by four foot wide, but yeah, you know, I got a lawn. Yes, I do. Look at that grass. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and then people from New Jersey <clears throat> being ourselves. And why would you call that a lawn? <laughs> what would ever make you think that's a lawn? <laughs> you think that's a lawn? Aww. Aww. <laughs> Aren't you special? So special. Yes, you are. So, so special. As far as that's concerned. 
But it, I remember uh, KB Holmes, I had a situation where I had, um, so there was a, out in Sheffield area, for those who know 1604 Sheffield, there's, first off, there was a house out there that I was like, I prefer that house in comparison to the KB home thing that I was looking at, like, wow, that is a house. The irony of a rock as far as that situation in my windshield. Nonetheless, where's my morning wind star? But anyway, um, I had an issue regarding how they were building the foundations out in that KB home and neighborhood. And there were cracks in the foundation that were about three and a half, four inches wide. And so I went to the front area and I was like, excuse me, <laughs> had pictures and everything. I'm like, excuse me, what is this? What, 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 what is this? And so the male was like, well, little lady. Oh, no, here we go. <laughs> no, no, no. big and pregnant, by the way. Oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead. Let me... Ah, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I, mean, I don't recommend you call me that. Well, okay, sweetheart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Born and raised in New Jersey. <laughs> you call me what? What you call me? I don't care that I'm being pregnant with my daughter at that point. <laughs> I will, I will, mm, let me just, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I, what you got what you got to say and the guy he was like oh well we'll fill that with cock that's okay for a tile in a shower not a two-story house no no cock for a two-story house crack foundation all four sides oh no 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 you're gonna build that correctly so then I had to fight with them, a bunch of anybody who's ever dealt with insurance companies at that point, I suppose, in that reference. And so I wanted my deposit back and I wasn't willing to deal with certain things. And so I went back and forth and I had explained, you know, the guy was like, oh, well, you know, you had a head injury. What do you really know? You're also a girl. I remember woodworking, huge, how my mind five car garage with the shed attached. Just gonna finish it. Just gonna finish it. Gonna just be cool. Gonna be, be so cool. Be so calm. My daughter inside my uterus like this. It's like, yes, I know. Mm -hmm, that's sexist machismo piece. <laughs> Which is an irony. So my son and my uterus towards my ex-in-laws and my biological. Uh, and then, you know, it starts with my daughter and my uterus. But any, any time a male was a sexist, the cheat. It's like, that's right. Technically, there's two of me. What? 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 <laughs> You know, I was pregnant. <laughs> and anybody, hell hath no fury. <laughs> Mother pissed off. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, you know, my daughter, as far as that's concerned, regarding that guy, and he was all titty baby temper tantrum. Well, one of the females tried to be, oh, well, you can just calm down. Don't let my pregnant belly fool you because don't think I don't know how to pick up this table and throw it. I don't care. And so I had to go through to the corporate office because I refused to deal with KB Home. Absolutely refused. And so I got my deposit back and they tried to give me some song and day. Oh, well, we could put you in a different, no, 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 <clears throat> no. And so within one year, I was listening to the local news and people had like 
all sorts of shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, maybe if you actually had quality construction in comparison to that. And so went through a few situations and um, I was informed by uh, the corporate office that, <laughs> that when they were trying to um, get me to be like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's pretty, we're, we've, we've upgraded from uh, Ray Ellison to RE or RA, whatever, to <laughs> Kaufman and Broad to KB Home to whatever, whatever, however many name, whatever. And it's like, uh huh, no, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. And so they did this seven houses in seven days. And it's like, um, except this is, I'm, I'm pointing this out to you as far as this is concerned. So then, the corporate office tried to say, well, if you had uh, sprinkler systems, then that wouldn't have occurred. The house wasn't even built yet, and you're gonna try as far as that you are some crappy, sorry excuse for construction workers, as far as that's concerned regarding buildings. And no, because that wouldn't fly up where I was born. Where you, you, you wouldn't ever make it in New Jersey or New York. I guarantee you. And the female I spoke with, she got all upset, and she's like, "What do you mean? I can make it in New York if I wanted to." No, you couldn't. Not if you're gonna be that way, I guarantee you. No, not at all. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. That sort of, mm, 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 no. And so, oh, well, we'll show you how much better we can go ahead. I dare you. I dare you to build stronger buildings in comparison to the crap you put out. <laughs> the female in the corporate office was like, I can't believe you're so mean. <laughs> So then there was a situation in 1993 and I told people a few things. I don't know what that was as far as that's concerned, but then, you know, there's 2001. So, you know, um, it's something to take in consideration regarding those factors. I don't like making insurance claims. I have a, I have a thing about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to deal with those things. That's why I fought Fred Lawyer, because I was not about to have that regarding my house. Mm -mm, no, mm -mm, no, I know better. Yeah, I know better. <laughs> my biological mother worked for Prudential. Mm -mm, no, I know better. Mm -mm. No, if it's your fault, it's your fault. It's your fault, and it's your fault. That's how that is. It's your fault. You just accept accountability because that's your responsibility for your stupidity, dots and truck. As far as that's concerned, I made attempts. As far as it's not my fault, the San Antonio Police Department took over four and a half hours to arrive. I was on them in that regard. Although there is that situation more recently, as far as that's concerned, and I wasn't even in a multiple precinct area at that point as far as those situations you know you don't have that problem on a military base at all whatsoever yeah if if an mp shows up because they're in there that's that's just how that goes there's not a there's not well what district of what precinct of what would it no there's none of that there is absolutely none of that if you call the mps the MP show up. And that's that simple. So just pointing that out there as to a difference regarding a few hypotheticals as far as that's concerned, because that's just the way that is. Uh, so yeah, that's that's something to consider because I don't know in regards of the 6th of January, 2021 regarding the hearings, I don't know. I know that there was a lot of, there were a lot of fences regarding, so if you compare it to the 2020 Austin area as to security, you had a lot of fencing and yeah, you had a few 
law enforcement guys here and there. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know what else was in the vicinity as far as that's concerned regarding the 6th of January. I'm sure that they had people who were in, you know, just regular whatever, but as far as, I also didn't go towards the buildings though. I, I stayed in the ellipse area. So, and then once I got to a certain point between, I suppose pun intended, between the Washington Monument and that um, World War Monument area, that was pretty much it. I was surprised I could even last as long as I did. I know there was a couple times when I got a little bit within the crowd and then I just kind of, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, the, the, it was, it was a, a little much. I, I couldn't distinguish what I was picking up on as far as uh, energetic sensations. So I had to, I had to, um, I had to, I had to go. And so, um, then I went out to the, what's it, the Marine Museum. Felt that I could calm myself down because I was picking up on so much at the time. It was, it was way, 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 way too much for me to deal with regarding the amount of, um, energetic for lack of a better word I don't know if I knew anybody I'm sure I've known people in person face to face in person that understand that in some references as to those factors regarding picking up energetic stuff and it's not necessarily picking up energetic stuff more along the lines of sensing it and so um I've just dealt with it as a child for a very long amount of time. And so I know that more recently I found out about different groups like the ESP or something and SRI or something. And that's just more recently having learned about, though in reference to uh, the attacks on the 11th of September in 2001 I mean you have the visuals regarding that and you know if there were people in the city or even New Jersey the bridges especially the bridges even in DC Virginia area that could have made attempts to explain that I could easily see anybody who survived from those time frames that were out there that could probably utilize that visual and give a better description for wherever they were in whichever area of. So if they were, so for example, I had stayed at the Hyatt in Arlington or Pentagon City area and people who could have seen could probably have given give a different viewpoint in that reference regarding New York City. Oh, if people brought up regarding the Statue of Liberty, especially, um, but also other factors. Because I didn't. If you if you look at some of the pictures from 9/11, 2001, you don't see the Statue of Liberty or even the glow of the Statue of Liberty in the pictures from that time frame. You see the smoke plumes, you see all that sort of stuff. And from whatever bridge you should be capable to see if, as to those pictures, you should be capable to see because of uh, when you take in consideration the Liberty Science Center area so that is not seen in the news footage from the bridge areas from New Jersey to New York City and vice versa. Something for, I, I know it's not the same as the 6th of January 2021 hearings, though the metaphors 
maybe that assists in regards to to take in consideration because I've been I have made attempts to actually get to areas to be capable to make attempts to assist so there's that so thank you for tuning in to my official YouTube channel hopefully that assists share the link to my official YouTube channel um, subscribe to my official YouTube channel and if you leave a comment make sure to have etiquette and respect uh, go to my website www.susanmewling.com which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com Today is the 16th of June, 2022. Sixteenth of June, two thousand twenty two.